Hello, welcome to our second video in our exploration of loop structures in Java. So like I said in my previous video, I'm teaching you how to program in Java, but the thinking is the same in any programming language. So we're going to look at a conditional loop called a while loop. And if you've already done conditional statements, you'll find that a while loop is exactly like a conditional statement. And all we do is change if to while. So with that in mind, let's actually dive into a program and do a little programming. So I have a little program here, and what it does is it's a program that asks the user to enter a passcode. So if I run this, I get enter passcode, and I type in, say, 555. It says access granted. I run that again. I put in a number like 123, access granted. So this is pretty useless because um, it tells me access granted regardless of what I put in. Don't mind that sound, that was just a meeting notification. <laughs> so, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to modify this program. And I'm going to write up here so we see. So this program will continually ask for a passcode until the user enters the correct code. So the first question to ask yourself now is, well, if we're continually asking the user until they enter the correct code, will I know when I start this program how many times the loop is going to occur? And the answer is no. It could take someone one try, two tries, a million tries. So in that case, I know the best choice here would be a conditional loop, and we're going to do this with a while loop. The next question to ask myself is, what, what component of this code needs to be executed multiple times. Well, we only, need to, we only need to declare and initialize variables once, so we don't need to declare and initialize a scanner object more than once, that integer a, the constant called passcode. We don't need to write access granted more than once, because we only want to say access granted if they get it right. It's this part of the program we need to repeat a number of times. So what I'm going to do is just to help with understanding, I'm going to tab this in because this is going to be the loop block. This is the part I want to execute for the loop. And I'm going to enclose it in braces. So now I know this is the loop block. So I have to put the condition in. The condition is going to be placed above the code block. So I'm going to say while, and now I'm going to put a condition inside of here. So now you have to ask yourself, when do you want the code block to run? Well, we want the code block to continually ask the user to enter a passcode until they enter the right passcode. So as long as the inputted number does not equal the passcode, we want this to continue to run. So we're going to say while A is not equivalent to passcode, And again, this is a symbol we might not have seen many times. This not equals to right here. It's an exclamation mark. And in programming, that's set as not. And I, yeah, that's set as not. <laughs> so now when I run this, what's going to happen is we'll initialize the scanner object. And remember, the scanner object, um, it can use the tools in the scanner class to take inputs from the keyboard. Um, we make a primitive type of integer, and we name that A. We make a constant called passcode. And remember, good programming etiquette is that you capitalize any constant. Um, that tells people who are reading the code, say you have a thousand lines of code, if they see a capital, they know it's a constant right away. So then it comes down here and it says, well, A is not equal to passcode. So we know A was initialized to zero, and we know passcode is 105. So they're not equal. So what that means is it's going to go into this block and execute it. So it's going to ask you for a passcode, take an input for A from the user, and then get to the end of the block. And again, the end of the block, I like to actually put the actual condition down here. Because again, our, our programs are small. Sorry. Our programs are small, so we can, we can easily see which braces match up. But if your program is really large, it's nice to be able to see a brace and immediately know what it pairs with. So if, if the user enters an A that is not the same as passcode, 
it's failed the condition. So it goes back up to the top and runs this again. So if I execute this now, we get enter passcode. If I put 999, we know that's not the passcode and it loops up. 102, not the passcode, it loops again. 100, not the passcode. And then I put 105 and it continues on. One last thought. When you're working with loop structures, something to ask yourself is when is the condition evaluated? Is it evaluated at the top of the code block for the loop, or the bottom of the code block for the loop? And in doing so, it helps you not only choose the best loop structure for the task, but it also helps you read through code more effectively and debug it. You will spend hours trying to solve a problem, and I guarantee you, one or two of those times it is going to be a semicolon that is missing. So in this case, we know the while loop will always evaluate the condition the very first time it gets to it. And then when it gets to the end, it checks the condition again. I hope this video helped.